about 15 years. Our friends had all fled, excuse me, I mean moved from the bustling, exciting city. A friend of mine, Marge, even had a little workshop of her very own. Oh, how I longed for a little space of my own. I knew I could be a brilliant writer as soon as I wrote something. I talked to Jim about it, and he said he would think about it. And meanwhile, he fixed up an office for me right in our cozy little apartment. I'm in my office. But this is an emergency. Part of my hair is curled completely the wrong way. Looks fine, Kelly. Very original. Mom? You! I'm not going to be out for dinner. I got a basketball game at Phil School. Uh-uh. You're not going into that neighborhood at this time of night. Oh, Mom, I promised him I was going to play. He's going to get so mad. Well, now look what you've done. You could have given her a concussion. You guys want to know something about F. Scott Fitzgerald and Shakespeare? They weren't mothers. David, read the Times. I was mugged. What? I was mugged. Somebody stuck a gun in my back and oh. took all my money. Honey, are you all right? Did he hurt you? No, no, no. Well, where? Where did it happen? Right down at the corner. He just took the money and ran. How much did he get? Just your allowance money. Honey, what did he look like? I don't know. He said, don't turn around. I was shaking like a leaf. I'm still shaking. It probably wasn't even a gun. Probably just a piece of pipe or something. And here I was worrying. Honey, please. Please, let's, let's just go for a drive Sunday in the suburbs. It won't hurt to look around. It'd be all right. It won't hurt to look around. Moving day was finally here. Jim and I had found the most wonderful little house, only a few miles from the city. He was as enthusiastic about it as I was. With Jim, however, the enthusiasm's not always right on the surface. But I knew him well, and... After all, I'd been married to him for years, hadn't I? And I'd seen him for several minutes each morning and evening, and I could just tell that deep down inside, he was ecstatic. Our adventure had begun. The early pioneers couldn't have felt more enterprising than we did. Westward ho! We were off to the raw frontier. We were off to fun and joy and air, trees, creativity, togetherness, crabgrass. Better watch your fries, or they may disappear before your very eyes. McDonald's world-famous fries taste so good, they disappear faster than you can eat them. So watch out. Keep your eyes on your fries, they're too hard to resist. Keep your eyes on your fries, because no fry tastes like this at McDonald's. Keep your eyes on your fries. <laughs> Hi there. I'd like to introduce you to a special new car. Take a look at this new Chrysler Newport, this new design. Now you can have the kind of room full-size cars have been known for. You can have new gas mileage you'll be happy to tell your friends about. Now you can have a Chrysler, all at a very down-to-earth price. Come up to the new Chrysler Newport, because now you can have it all. Now. Right now. Sally couldn't be in the class play this year. She had a toothache. 
The dentist said Sally wasn't brushing right and needed a fluoride toothpaste. My wife said, let's get AIM. They say kids may brush longer because they like the taste. I said it's fluoride, not taste that fights cavities. <laughs> she showed me AIM has fluoride. Plus, it's clinically proven to reduce cavities. But Sally's our proof. She may be brushing longer. She sure is getting good checkups with AIM. Take AIM against cavities. It takes the average wheat farmer over 50 days and 14 tons of machinery just to plant his seeds in the ground. Now Phillips Petroleum has helped develop a better way, a system that plows, fertilizes, and plants in a single step. It can lighten a farmer's workload and cut his fuel use in half, conserving energy for all of us while we make fine products for your car. That's performance from Phillips Petroleum, the performance company. I could feel the family harmony increasing by leaps and bounds. Davy, honey, sit down. Daddy can't drive with scissors in his ear. He's trying to cut his hands off. Dorothy, please find something for Davy to do. Honey, sit down. Come on, sit in the back. Look out the window. Hey, are we there yet? Kelly, when we're there, I'll stop the car and we'll get out. We didn't seen this far before. We didn't have the kids along with us. It's my window and I say when it goes up and when it goes down. Come on. Mom! Let it be your little brother's window today. Boy, it sure pays to be born last. Roll it up. Mom! Mom! Now, stop it, both of you. It's not going to be anybody's window. I'll have it boarded up. Oh, smell that fresh air, kids. My life's over, that's all. I've been pulled up by the roots. I'll never see Phil McGonagall again. You hate Phil McGonagall. Well, I'll still never see him again. Mom, I think I'm going to be sick. You're not going to be sick. That's my final word. Steve, get your hand in the car. It'll blow off. Well, how many kids had their hands blown off last year? 23,000. Stop it. Now separate. 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 Sit on your hands. Trips used to be so much easier when we had Burma shave signs to read all up and down the highway. You remember that, honey? <laughs> oh, I can tell you what. I remember, let me see if I remember it. Uh, uh, don't stick your elbow out too far. It might go home in another car. Isn't that a hoof? <laughs> Well, I just pity you guys, that's all, being born after Burma shave signs. Mom, can we keep sending all the chocolate chips out of the cookies? Well, shut up, Davy. And how much farther? That's why I got my head snapped off for asking. About an inch and a half. Dorothy, can't you interpret a simple road map? Don't shout at me, Jim. I can't handle shouting today. No, I'm just suggesting that as a high school graduate, you should be able to read just a simple scale of a map. Hey, Dad! I just saw a hand fly by. Have we passed through any time zones yet? Honey, you are happy about this move, aren't you? Hey. <laughs> Similar, don't they? It's hot in here, Mom. All the apartments in New York look similar. Mom, it's really hot. I hope it's not around here. Are we close yet? Yes, dear. We're out in the boonies. Can say that again. 105. One, it's 121. I think you're going the wrong way. Wrong way? No, wait, 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 wait. We've already been here before. Where are we? 
Gee, it's pretty here. 808? No, it's 121. I swear. There's 812 and 816. Why are we? The numbers change every time I come around, I think. It's just like that one. That's not it. We'll never get there. What if we have to go shopping? Is there a market near? We'll go hitchhiking. There's a market. They are all exactly the same, aren't they? No. Yeah. No. I think we've seen this part before. Are we going in circles? I'm hungry. Is there a hamburger place around here or something? Hey, look at that up. Is that it? No. This is the third time we've been around this block, Dad. Is it? We're going in circles. Where is it, Dad? There it is! There it is! Hey, look! It's so neat! Look at all the dirt! Come on! We're supposed to have some trees. We will. Builder just hasn't put them in yet. Well, give me the keys. Oh. <laughs> How much landscaping comes with the house? We're down for five maples, eight tacks. Whoa! Whoa! Evergreens, two ash, four locusts, two flowering mother in law tongues, and 109 living rose hedge plants. Where? Here in the window ledge. <laughs> Evergreens and maples. I got fresh dibs and a rum and fry. That's my room. Hey, Mom, there's no water. The salesman said just to make a note of everything we find wrong and call the builder. Mom, the toilet back doesn't flush right. <laughs> He sure found that out fast. The furniture's here! The furniture's here! Before you know it, it'll be just like home. Hi. Welcome to Oak Haven Manors. I'm Helen Wentworth, two houses down. Oh, hello. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, the one with the yellow garbage can. Oh, how depressing to be summed up that way. <laughs> uh, well, come in. I'm, I'm Dorothy Benson. Uh, hi. Hi. <laughs> hey, listen, you haven't seen that kid around here that doesn't belong to you, have you? No, not today. Well, he has a way of blending in with other families. Once we lost him for two weeks. How'd you find him? We saw him pictured with the Robinsons on their Christmas card. <laughs> hey, come on, sit down. <laughs> oh, dear. You got any kids? Uh, three. Oh. Pets? No. You got kids? Four. Oh. Pets? Two ponies. Ponies? Well, Great Dane's ponies are the same thing. <laughs> Gee. This reminds me of what I went through a year ago. <sighs> if I can be of any help, just holler. Oh, thanks. But, uh, I, I just have to call the builder. The builder? Yeah. Got his number right here. The salesman gave it to me. Oh, that number is a candy store that takes messages. You'll never hear from the guy. <sighs> what am I going to do? All the windows are painted shut. If I plug in the toaster, the kitchen lights blow out, and the, the washing machine just sits out there and groans. Is your husband at all handy? We had the only toilet seat in the city that was held together with silly putty. How long has 
we've been thrust into this wagon train life. I'll try to do a few of the minor repairs. See what I got here. Cork, curler, a poker chip, and a book of rain soap matches. And a pair of pliers. Uh, what do you need first? Storm windows for the entire house. What else? Well, if we don't get the washing machine fixed, the kids are going to be going to school in aluminum underwear. Where is it? a block back there. Oh. Well, I... I found it in the middle of the street. Well, thank you very much. That's very nice of you. Stay there. I'll get it. I had it right to... Right, I'm just so loaded here. Well, I'm not sure. loaded. I, I'm, I'm overloaded. What you have to do is zipper up this bag. Right, yeah. Okay, you okay? Y yes. Okay, you're on your own way. Thanks so much. That's very neighborly. Thank you. Have a good day. got lost. Oh, thanks for the confidence. Here, help me with that. I think the ice cream has had it. Oh, I guess I'll have to shop before the sun comes up. You know, maybe you ought to get a car. Never. I love the fresh air. I didn't move out to the suburbs to be cooped up and scoot around town in some feet decadent car. Huh? Oh, my. Did you leave the TV on? Davy's watching it. Wonderful. I thought you'd kick the TV habit since we moved out here, but lately you are starting to revert. When you grow up, I want you to be able to walk and to talk and to do things. But whenever I try to do anything, I'm a big flop. What do you mean, a big flop? I left work 20 minutes early to beat the rush. There were three cars ahead of me, all going 15 miles an hour. If you leave work 20 minutes early, it takes 40 minutes longer. I don't want to talk about it. Sometimes I wish I was a simple shepherd. No throughways, no taxes. Our campaign for the chocolate cereal was thrown out. We may lose the account. Why? I don't know. It could be that it was good and they don't know, or that it was no good and they do know. I'm going to have to stay in town one night next week to work it out. What's the matter? I 
called me Fumble Fingers and Jerk. Who did? Everybody watching me at baseball practice. You mean your little league group? Oh, uh, silly kids don't know what they're talking about. It was the parents. Well, I think you ought to forget it if everybody's crazy like that. I don't want to forget it. I want to play. Come here. Listen to me. Nobody's perfect. It takes a lot of persistence. Persistence? Didn't take any persistence for B.C. Meredith. He doesn't even try and he's perfect. Yeah, there are people like that. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. First chance I get, I'm going to teach you how to catch and throw and all that stuff. Okay? Really? Uh, okay. Got a hug for me? Thanks, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go wash up for dinner. Uh. Hey, see? You couldn't play ball with him like that in the city. I can't play with him out here either. I was always lousy at baseball. Yes? Oh, hi, Mrs. Benson. I'm Hal Watson. We talked earlier on the phone today. Oh, yes. Uh, my husband just got home, though, and he's a little tired. Oh, okay. Well, this won't take but a minute. Just a couple get acquainted call. Hi, Mr. Benson. Don't get up. Hal Watson, Triple Supreme Insurance. Your charming wife invited me over here this evening to spell out a few facts of life for you. Now, uh, it's a lovely home you've got here. Well, I see you have kids. Here. Oh, please sit down. This won't take any time at all, I promise. Okay. That's for you. No, that's for me. That's for you. That's for you. And. Okay. You've just moved into your own home. Your kids are playing in the backyard, their own backyard. Finally, you're employed. And you stay home all day and bake bread, right? You must be just exactly like the family in this picture, right? What if this happens? How'd you do that? No, you're missing the point, Mrs. Benson. What happens to this happy little family when suddenly Daddy is out of the picture? They're trying to repossess the car. They're taking back the house, the furniture. The children are crying. Mommy doesn't know which way to turn. Do you know what this means? It means I get custody of the kids. It means Daddy didn't make plans. Well, Fortunately, it is not too late, Mr. Benson. You can still protect your loved ones with Triple Supreme's mortgage insurance. Fortunately, when you're young and healthy, the premiums are nothing. But when you get older and, and develop uh, circulatory disorders or a heart condition or an aneurysm, well, this coverage would not be available to you at any price. Aneurysm. What about when mommy leaves? Where am I going? What kind of insurance do you carry on yourself? Well, I... We have a policy around here. Look, could you leave this stuff and let it's me... It's probably be... just your basic burial policy, right? Well, I don't like to be flippant about something this serious, but that kind of policy won't get you much more than having her propped up in a church of their choice while Perry Como sings on a record, of course, Don't Fence Me In. Then they stick her on a public bus, and God knows what they do with her then. No, not for her. I recommend the Happy Homemaker... I'm a little tired right now. Could you just leave that... this stuff and maybe I'll be in touch with you at some future time, really? Uh... Never pays to hesitate, Mr. Benson. You know, the years split by well, and then all of a sudden it's really too a... late. I, I'm really about to lose my mind. I strongly suggest that we do this some other time, really. Got it. Okay. I think I've overstayed my welcome here, so I'll just be running along, but do keep this. Thank you. You keep this and everything... There. I'll just be running along, okay? Thanks so much. Oh. You know, you're both such bright people. I'm, I'm almost embarrassed to ask you this question, but... Well, you are setting aside $50 a month for each child's education, aren't you? Now, 
Don't bother to answer. Of course you are. Uh, if, if you're not, is it? No, uh, excuse, excuse me, excuse me. Really, really, thanks a lot for. Can we do this another time? I'm, yes, I'm, I'm sorry, really, I'm sorry to, you know, but I just, I just thank you. Okay. We'll, we'll talk again. Th thanks okay, a lot. Thank you very much. It was fun. I appreciate it. Why'd you ask that man over here? I didn't ask him over. He called me on the telephone, and he asked if he could come over sometime. And I said, well, yeah, okay. I mean, I couldn't say, no, don't you ever come over here, could I? We do have enough of all the kinds of insurance he was talking about, don't we? Of course we do. You know, I don't think we have enough coverage for the kids' college. Uh, we better give what's his face a call. Imagine the kids going to college. We were going to be well off by the time Steve hit puberty. Well, he hasn't really hit it yet. He hasn't settled into it. If we were married, I thought I'd be president of the company within 10 years. I thought I'd at least have one novel in the top 10. It's more than 10 years, huh? I want the president. <laughs> You've done great. I'm the one who hasn't done anything. It's not too late, is it? For me to start writing. No. Good. Because I'm really going to start tomorrow. Good. That's good. Mr. Tompkins said I had a flare. That was his exact word. Who's Mr. Tompkins? The washer repairman. You know. Yeah. Fall under the dazzling spell of one of the world's greatest magicians and his celebrity sorcerers. The magic of David Copperfield. Next. You saw a great deal. The force you possess. I did see it. Mrs. Lou, you must untie me. David Banner searches for ancient wisdom and finds treachery on the incredible Hulk. Then on Flying High. The girls spend Halloween in a haunted house. A great evening starting at 8, 7 Central and Mountain. I was flat till I went fluffy with pearl concentrate. Say these are hairs. Dirt and oil deposit in here and make hair go flat. Pearl leaves no deposits, so hair fluffs full like this. Go from flat to fluffy with pearl. Psst. Have you heard? All temperature cheer's been improved. What? Uh-huh. All temperature cheer has a new patented formula. What's wrong with my old one? It cleaned in hot, warm, and cold. You'll like new cheer even better. Now it actually reduces wrinkling. New cheer reduces wrinkling? We use the old cheer formula on the left, new cheer on the right. The right's less wrinkled. Now, cheer won't get rid of wrinkles completely, but... Yeah, but it'll save me ironing. Yep. And cheer still cleans in all temperatures? Yep, even the clothes you don't iron will look good. So you're still mad cheer was improved? Nah, there's only two things I hate worse than ironing. Wrinkles and gray hair. <laughs> New old temperature cheer actually reduces wrinkling while you wash. New old temperature cheer. Sure, have some new country-style Pringles. A denim blue can. Mmm, good. Good? Why, that's a whole peck of hearty flavor. This old country's wearing denim. Pringles country style is too. No preservatives in Pringles. Just a natural taste that's new. Start with whole and peeled potatoes. Fried and fried up with a smile. There's a peck of a party flavor in new Pringles country style. That's it. Put this blindfold on, okay? Now, smell this. Mmm. Wildflowers? Oh, perfume. Uh-uh. It's Came. New Came for the new wildflower fragrance. <laughs> what are you doing? Mm, that feels nice. 
Oh, now I really smell the wildflowers. To me, it just smells wild. The wild and beautiful new fragrance of Camay. The grass is always greener over the septic tank. We'll continue. Thursday, strange and mysterious happenings on Walton's Mountain. Phones acting up, days breaks by itself. What's going on around here? Push your contact. Next, McGarrett is framed by big time gamblers on Hawaii 5 0. Then, on Barnaby Jones, a playful romp in the woods results in murder. Starting at 8, 7 Central and Mountain. Tomorrow on CBS. Now, Celeste brings you Sicilian style thick crust pizzas. Abundanza! Three Celeste Sicilian style pizzas, each with a special thick crust that's crispy outside, tender inside. Like fresh Italian bread. In cheese, sausage, and deluxe, each topped with everything you like in abundance. Abundanza! Three Celeste Sicilian style pizzas with a special thick crust. We don't need more laws. We need to enforce the laws we already have. We need judges who care more about the victims of crime than they do about the criminals. Senator George Duke Majin passed a law that said, use a gun, go to prison. For serious crimes, mandatory prison. The same for forcible rape and violent crimes against the elderly and disabled. Mandatory prison. Senator George Duke Duke Majin. When I'm your attorney general, if somebody commits a crime, they're going to pay the price. Prop 13 supporters push on more at 11. my office. Um. Oh. Oh. Uh, are you ready? For what? The plant party. It's today. Oh, Helen, I don't know. I really ought to stick to this now that I've started. Well, how are you going to write about life if you don't live it a little? You're right. You're right. Um. Yeah, hang on. I'll, I'll just be a second. Okay. You're right. Hello? I'm out here. I knocked off at least four minutes on the throughway tonight, I think. The trick is not to get on expense. That's where it all clogs up. But to go two miles further and get on a Chester. What are you doing? Waiting for our dinner to thaw out. Then I have to put it in the oven. Where's your mother? She's at a plant party. She just called and said that I have to look after them, I have to cook dinner, and I can't leave the house tonight. Just so she can learn more about mealybug or something. Yeah. Do your best. I gotta lie down. Dad! Dad! The shrubbery's going! Oh, boy! We'll climb and visit the giant's castle! No, Dad, really! It's really growing! When you were little, you told me the lions on the wallpaper were growling. We'll take you out there. Let's go look at it. Let's go look at it. Come on, come on. <laughs> come on, come on. Come on, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Come on, come here. It's the truth. Just wait till you see it. Look, here and over there. So now am I a liar? So now am I not? You know something? I think this one has grown. I've created a forest with my bare hands. 
my plan is that one. Yeah. Hi there. Oh, hi. Lester Wentworth. Hi, Jim Vanson. <laughs> Our wives are off gallivanting together. Oh, my son, David. Hey, thank you. Well, I see you haven't uh, given much thought to manure and mulch yet, have you? No, no, but I've, I've been intending to. I mean, I assume you're planning a lot. <laughs> well, something like that. Uh, well, you can't leave it like this. It's an eyesore. I'll tell you something. This could be a showplace. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Look at this. You've got a terrific spot. I wouldn't wait too long, though. You'll be headed straight for sod, wet worms, and fungus by the first cold spell. Listen, you got any gypsum? Uh, I, I, I kind of doubt that I do. Uh, for starters, you're going to need a couple hundred pound bags of gypsum. See the soil? There. Alkaline. What you do is mix it up real good. See, uh, 35 to 50 pounds to 1,000 square feet of soil. Yeah. You're going to need some well-rotted manure, uh, peat moss, some coarse sand, wood ash. Just to grow grass. Man, you got a lot to learn about the country. Yeah, well, we just got... <laughs> Where would I get this stuff? Bluebird Nursery, right up here in Swallow Drive. Uh -huh. Listen, they're open till 7.30. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll take you down there myself, make sure you got everything you need. Oh, that would be great. I appreciate it. It's not too much trouble. Ah, no trouble at all. Oh, thank you. Show us. the bare beginnings of a fabulous lawn. A guy down the street, Lester Wentworth, gave me a few tips. Did you know that the first two to five inches of soil are the richest in minerals? Yes. I just came from something called a plant party. Will you look at us? We're practically farmers. See, I've got to move all the topsoil out, save it, loosen up the bottom layer, put in four different things, put it all back together again, water it in the cool of the evening for three weeks. And this is all before I even can put in any grass. This is, this is really a project. You know what? Uh, I love you. This is really going to be a show place. How was your party? Well, it was different, I'll say that for it. I learned just about everything that could possibly go wrong with plants. It's a wonder any of them ever survive. Jim? What, huh? What's all this? Oh, that's just some stuff I'll be needing for the lawn. It's enough for Central Park. Oh, I'll be using it up pretty quickly. If it's in your way, I'll move it. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, my. <laughs> sorry. It's all right. It's all right. Just go away. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. 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 Thank you. 
Again Saturday. We'll do it Sunday for sure. So hot, but let me tell I see a few. Okay? You get over there. Ready? Come on. Good. Come on. Come on. Good. All right. Here we go. Hey, almost. Almost. Good miss. All right. Give me another chance, will you? Huh? Okay. I'm going to get tough now. Ready? I think you could learn better from your father. Jim, guess what? We're going to be host and hostess. What? Party next Saturday. Helen was supposed to have it, but she's got her in-laws visiting, so she asked me to have it here. My lawn isn't ready for people yet. Jim, I think it's time that you met some of the people out here. It'll be fun. It's, um, uh, it's something called a, a cooking party. And uh, these people come over and they cook dinner for everybody in these special pans. And then while we're all eating, they try to sell us their pans. We'll have to keep the people off the lawn. Right. What are you thinking? I was wondering what the expiration date was on my driver's license. What time do these guys serve dinner? I don't even smell anything cooking. When you're not supposed to, as he said. The food is wallowing in its own juices, which are locked underneath the flavor seal lids. Hi, I'm Brother Bud. <laughs> now, please, feel free to ask for refills of celery juice. My brother and I will have your dinner ready in two shakes. Excuse me. Dorothy. Oh, hi, darling. Hello. How's little Jenny doing? Oh, she's just thriving. She's What's been wonderful. Very cheerful. And I, oh, I'd like you to meet my husband, Jim. How do you do? How do you do? Nice to meet you. Dolly. Dolly's the lady who gave us the plant party. Ah. Uh. And how's Diane? I, uh, well, Diane, I don't know. She's not so hot. Oh, my, I should say. Well, do you talk to her? Give her encouragement, the will to live, the incentive to grow? I pay more attention to Diane than I do to my kids. Good. Don't you just love them? Who? Your new plant friends. Oh, yeah, yeah. Jenny and Diane. Good vibes in the house, Dorothy. Oh, thank you, Leslie. Leslie, this is my husband, Jim. Jim Leslie. Kafka! Oh, hello. How, how do you do? Well, you're my college sweetheart reincarnate. <laughs> right, yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, he had that same sort of cute but repressed look. <laughs> I hope you have a little more flexibility than he had. I hope, I hope I do, yeah. <laughs> I hope so. Leslie. Oh. Well, I'll see you in a minute. Okay. 
like her, Jim? Hey, good people. This is Ralph Corliss. He's good people, too. Ralph, these are our two new members of the community here, Dorothy and Jim Benson. I am very happy to meet you. Hi. Ralph, that's nice. Nice to see you again. Hello. Couldn't Linda make it? No, she was scheduled for this district manager's meeting at the office. Oh. Ralph and Linda have reversed their sex roles. She works and he keeps the house. Isn't that refreshing? <laughs> it's sort of a little sociological experiment right here in our own community. <laughs> Listen, we're very liberal here. Different strokes for different folks, right? Ralph here is just as welcome as any regular guy. <laughs> See, thanks, Lester. <laughs> See you in a bit. He sure is an attractive man, don't you think? A man does not notice that thing about other men, honey. Well, you can tell the difference between Cary Grant and Peter Laurie, can't you? Uh, anyway, Ralph's lawn is a joke. Uh, have you seen these new sex education manuals your children are being given? No. Well, diagrams, right? Pictures of nude people. Shocking. Why, if the good Lord had meant for people to go nude, he never would have invented the wicker chair. <laughs> oh. Well, it's all right to be flippant, but... I am concerned about the moral health of our children. Oh, look at the lax dress code. Have you been past the schoolyard lately? It's a sea of bare midriffs and navels. Today the tummy, tomorrow the tushy. <laughs> hey, yeah. I can see this just isn't the atmosphere for a serious discussion. Excuse me. Dinner is served. Come and get it, or I'll have to throw it away. <laughs> Don, I'm just gonna nip out and check the lawn. Now I've got real <sighs> panties in my pantyhose. It's sheer indulgence. Now we've got real <sighs> The real panty pantyhose with cool, comfortable cotton, not just in one spot, but inside the whole panty. Now we've got real uh. panties in our pantyhose. It's sheer indulgence. <clears throat> Why did Car and Driver magazine call the Audi 5000 a functional masterpiece and yet one of the most sumptuous cars ever to come out of Germany? Why did Road and Track magazine say, for the money, we don't see anything that can touch it? Test drive the Audi 5000 at your Porsche Audi dealer and find out why. Ragu introduces its newest taste in spaghetti sauce in years. Ragu classic combinations. There's one with sausage and peppers. Sausage and peppers? Come here. Another with mushrooms and onions. And a third with onions and peppers. Mmm, onions. And peppers. That's some combination. New Ragu classic combination. That's Italian. <laughs> Imagine if someone invented a wonderful box and gave you a way to catch little pieces of your life so that you could see them again anytime by just dropping them into the box. Now, now, wouldn't that be something? Well, it is something. Polarvision, Polaroids, instant movies. Seconds after you shoot, you've got it. And you'll still have it even when certain persons go off to college. You sure threw me to the wolves tonight. I was back for the broccoli. Well, but while you were out checking your lawn, you missed further discussions on sex, motherhood, and equality. Dolly was against all of them. Wish you'd missed the sales pitch. Well, nobody else was buying anything. I felt kind of sorry for Brother Bud. 
After all, he did cook that wonderful meal for free. Free? This stuff cost me 150 bucks. I get the feeling you could pop down to the mall and get this for half the price. Who could pop anywhere without a car? A car? Mm-hmm. Truly, you must realize by now that it is a bit difficult for me to get around out here without a car of my own. Are you telling me you want a car? Yes. I realize the timing isn't perfect right after I've bought a few pans. You always said you didn't want a car. You said you didn't need a car. You said you wouldn't take a car if it were offered to you. I lied. It was practically a principle. It was a principle. It was my only principle, and I'm dropping it. Jim, I can't keep hitching rides with Helen all the time. It's embarrassing. Besides, I admit it. I want to be a part of things out here. I, I want to be one of the gang. I want to have lunch with the girls once in a while. I thought you were going to do all this writing. Well, I will. Don't you see a car could free me so I can write? Jim, how much could a little second-hand car cost? A lot. No. Did you see that spiffy little sports car Leslie had? Yes. Well, it would be perfect for me. No. Yes, it would. It's low on gas. It'd be a good investment. Just a nice, neat little compact car. That's all. Something for me to zip around in. How's it drive? Like a tank. <laughs> you look great in it. I do? Yeah. I thought you went after a little sports car. But for a little extra money, we get something we really can use. Look at all the room in there. Well, at least I've got wheels now. I'll have a little more freedom. Lester has freedom now. I picked up all this wood paneling, so he'd be free to play golf. Oh. Helen has freedom now. I pick up her doggies from their beauty parlor while she's free to go to her beauty parlor. Jim has freedom now. I pick up his lawnmower. I pick up his shovel. I pick up his rake. Which leaves Jim free not to. Hello? Oh, hi, hon. Don, I'm falling behind here. The chocolate cereal people still aren't satisfied with the skew of our campaign, so I, I gotta stay and try to give it another skew. Yeah, well, I guess those skews can be tricky. So I better stay in the office again tonight. Again? Well, I need every minute I can get, and I can really save some time not going back and forth on the throughways. Yeah, you're right. How's my lawn doing? Any new seedlings come up? Well, no, I've been a little busy. If you want, I'll go look. No, no, no. It's hard to know what to look for. Listen, honey, you know what you can do for me? If you could pick up three 100-pound sacks of A1 hydrogen manure, I'd really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, sure. I'll just toss those suckers right on the grocery cart. Thanks, honey. I'll see you tomorrow night. Well, I hope so. Bye. Yeah, that little league staff, but I'm glad you're finally enjoying it. Oh, no, this isn't that team. This is the new team, the Corliss Clowns. Corliss Clowns? Yeah, you know, Mr. Corliss. Oh, yeah. Coach Corliss lets everybody play. Today we play the Tiny Tigers, and next week we play the Flyweight Boxes. Oh, how'd today's game go? Oh, we lost. Oh, I'm sorry. I hope the people watching didn't start calling you names again. Oh, no, Coach Corliss never lets anybody watch. Well, gotta hit your showers. Thursday we're playing what, the Giants, right? 
All right. Uh, Kenny, you're going to catch. And Stevie, second base. You, did you bring your lunch? All right, listen. Make sure you bring your lunch because I forgot my lunch and I'm starving, okay? Come on, huh? What I want? All right, you brought your lunch. Great. All right. Kenny, pay attention now. Hi, Coach. What's going Chris, here. All right, you guys take your positions. I'll be right with you, okay? Coming over. I told you he's not going to like you watching. Hi, Davey. Hi again, Mrs. Benson. Hello, Mr. Corliss. You want to watch his practice for a while? Oh, well, gee, I don't know. Davey here tells me uh, you're not too keen on spectators. Well, not at the games, but sometimes at practice it's okay. Um, if Davey doesn't mind. It'll be okay, Mom. You sure? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Come on, Dave. David, play second. Okay. Do you want me to pitch? Uh, no. Brian, come here. You're going to pitch today, okay? Melissa! Come on in. Melissa! All right, sweetheart, your turn. Okay, get out of the ballpark. Okay, look alive. Be happy. All right, Melissa. That's my girl. Go run, Melissa. Run, 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 run. All right. All right. Go to second, Melissa. Go to second. Go to third. Here. Come on. Look alive out there. Look at this. Hurry up. Wait a minute. All right. Let's get on that ball. Come on. Hurry up. All right. You got it. Melissa, go home. Go home. Go home. All right, home run for Melissa, whoa, <laughs> what a team, all right, let's go, come on, we need a batter, you, get up and play, David, play third, here we go, oh, Mr. Corliss, I just want to thank you, the main thing is that they have fun, right, well, I sure did, um, would you tell Davey I'll be back in a little bit to pick him up? I, I've, I've got to go now. Sure. Uh, hey, you're a great audience. Come back, okay? I sure will. Thanks. Okay. Did we eat yet? Huh? Hello? Jim? Hello, cutie. <laughs> I've just about given you up again tonight. I didn't get out of the office till 6.30, and I had a couple of stops to make. You know what? What? The throughway was a breeze at this hour. I got to my usual shortcut, you know, the Wilma turnoff. Yeah? I said, the heck with it. I'm just going to zip along the main throughway. Well, good for you. I think it's important to be daring like that once in a while. Did you see the boys when you came in? They're all fine. What's all that racket? What oh, racket? That's Arlo. I got him at the pound. He was free. Arlo, come here. Come on. It's a dog. It's Arlo. It's not a dog. It's a lion. Get him out of here. Send him home. Dorothy, I got to thinking about you and the kids last night. Arlo's a fantastic watchdog, and it'll be great company for you here all day by yourself. No dog. No dog. Mom. Oh, yeah, Daddy loves you. Yeah, well, here's your responsibility. We love dogs. Look how he's smiling. I love you. All right, all right, all right. You can keep him, but that means you take care of him. You clean him, you take him out, you do whatever you have to do with him. I am having nothing to do with him. They will, they will, they will. Hold still, Arlo. Wait. Hold, Arlo. Helen, Arlo just had a close encounter of the third kind with the skunk. What do I do? Bathe him in what?
Eric, stay right in there. Don't be afraid of him. Tony. Oh, not a bad pitch. You're going to get a little bit to the left, baby. Bill, can you throw the ball back to the pitcher? Look at this. All right, all the way home. Come on, Aaron. Hurry up. Keep going. Go all the way. Look at this. Cut him off at the plate. Come on, Aaron. Hurry up. Yay, Tony. Nice. Okay, next batter. Davey, you're up. Pretty good today, Ace. Mom, since Dad's not coming home tonight, can we stop off for some hamburgers? I guess so. Hey, Coach, do you want to get some dinner? I'd love to. Hey, look, Linda's working late tonight anyways. If you don't mind, can my kids and I tag along? <laughs> Are you kidding? I would love to hear a low voice at dinner for a change. Fantastic. We'll follow you. Okay. Let's, uh, let's pick up Kelly and Steve. Come on, Arlo, just get in, don't get in the front. Boy, I think the Coilers come to the neatest team. So do I. You're crazy. You guys don't even know how to play baseball. Oh, what do you know? A lot more than you, wimp. Also, I was going to write a great book, but I never seemed to get around to it. What's the book about? You really want to know? Yeah. It's a murder mystery. Mm. I've got it all up here in my head. Now, the trick is to get it all down there on a piece of paper. You got a title? The Murders of Mary Murdoch. Uh-uh. It's a very clever plot. It's all about this girl, Mary, Mary Murdoch. Murdoch. And uh, apparently, she's murdered twice in it. But, aha, uh -huh, there's this gimmick. No, 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 don't tell me. I want to read it. I love mysteries. You're kidding. When I lie about a thing like that, I'll buy the first copy. <laughs> sure. Say, how, how come you haven't asked me why I keep house while my wife works? Never occurred to me. Is that the absolute truth? The absolute truth is I am dying to know. Okay. <laughs> well, up to two years ago, Linda was working part-time a few afternoons a week selling audiovisual aids to schools. Mm -hmm. She was doing very well at it. So they offered her the job of district manager. She wanted to try it. The money was great. So I sold my business and took over for her at home. As simple as that? Hmm. It seemed fair at the time. That is incredible. I hate housework. It's not so bad. I mean, I'm not too crazy about cleaning the oven. <laughs> chicken. It's Swiss cheese on top of sliced ham on top of a boneless chicken patty. And you get a steak on top of that. Only at the Sizzler. Good evening. I'm Connie Chung. Some 250 Proposition 13 supporters met in Reseda tonight, and they were meeting there in an effort to keep the tax revolt alive. Our Ken Gale was there. He'll have a report. The dollar falls to record lows around the world due to President Carter's anti-inflation message. And locally, officials say the arsonist who started the fire in Agora had tried to start one not far away from that area only two weeks ago. We'll have more on those stories tonight at 11 o'clock. Smog investigation tomorrow at 5 and 6. There you are. All right. Oh, it's nice to see you home for a change. Are you early or am I late? I'm early. Around 4.30, I said, the heck with it. I haven't been home in two days. I want a good meal. Uh, you mean if the coffee shop in your building had more variety, you wouldn't be here? No, I didn't mean that. Mm -hmm. I got home just in time. The lawn has started to dry out in spots. I get third billing after the meal in the lawn, but I'll take it. I missed you.
Dinner in 30 minutes. Well, count me out. I gotta go to a magician's meeting. Since when are you a magician? I took it up today. And I'm having dinner, Debbie's. Hey, now wait. Hey, hey, you guys. Your father finally drops in for a meal, and now all of a sudden you're splitting somewhere. You know how long it's been since we've sat down and eaten a meal together? I don't know why I'm asking you. You didn't even have tea. Well, oh, I'm I'm gonna gonna go. Go. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. If it can't be tonight, it's going to be tomorrow night. We are all going to sit in that dining room together as a family and eat only. A certificate of death, a recent one, will be an excuse for a no-show. After school, I was going to practice my semaphore signals with Debbie and then go to the library. And I got a game to lose. I've got a five o'clock dental appointment tomorrow. Tomorrow night. Dinner. Together. Well, if we're not finished loving one another by 6.30, I'm going to split. Now that we're all here together, let's talk. Let's, let's share our day. That should be an enriching experience. Guess what seven words Ramsey, Ramsey Phillips says you can't use on TV? <laughs> not that enriching, sweetheart. <laughs> Dear, what would you like to talk about? Why don't your kids want your father to have a lawn? I mean, how do you expect that lawn to cope? Bikes, skates, football games. Steven, take that out of your ear and listen to your father. I know the lawn speech. It runs two minutes and 40 seconds. Very funny, but the fact remains that no one lifts a finger to help. I mean, you can run across it, you can tear it to bits, you can break its will to live. But does anybody contribute to its compost? No. I mean, maybe I should donate the front yard to the government for nuclear testing. <laughs> Debbie, dear, wouldn't you be more comfortable waiting in the living room for Kelly? She'll be with you as soon as she's finished with this family feast. Well, okay. But when our semaphore signals are sloppy, don't anybody blame me. Dad? <clears throat> Every kid in the neighborhood has a 10-speed bike but me. My skateboard's put down the middle. Oh, 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 yeah. What am I, some kind of Santa Claus? Do you know how much money I got as a kid? 25, 25 cents a week. 25 cents a week. 25 cents a week. You know what I had to buy with that 25 cents a week? You, you had, had to buy your books, clothes, clothes tuition, tuition, medical, medical expenses, expenses, and pay for your own entertainment. And I buy all my own books, clothes, medical expenses, pay my own rent and entertainment. And you know how old I was when I got my first car? 23, 23 years, years old. old. 23 years old. And you know who got me my you first did. car? You did. You did. You did. I, got, I know a good joke. Can I go now? No, you just sit right there and let your little brother tell his joke. Okay, now, what's yellow, of course? And, and, um, and has four legs and weighs 400 pounds. <laughs> and, uh, and... And, and it goes with, with, peep, peep. You've got it all mixed up. How do you know? You never heard the joke. Stephen, would you let him tell it his way? Okay. Now go ahead, sweetheart. It's wonderful so far. Finish it. That's all. Now you're supposed to guess. Give up? Yeah. A 400-pound canary. Oh. <laughs> Don't you get it? Isn't it two 200-pound canaries? Well, what's the difference? One 400-pounder and two 200-pounders. No, 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 no difference. It's just that uh, that's the way I heard it. That's all. Well, if you heard it before, you should have stopped me. It's not my turn to do the dishes. I think I better go practice my semaphore signals with Debbie. I'll be right with you, Debbie. Just got to get my flags. 
I hope there's an afterlife. An afterlife? Life after the kids are grown. Anything? No, not exactly. I'm just trying to write. Oh, is that all? Why is it nobody ever gives me any encouragement? If a person got a little encouragement, they might get inspired. I'm going shopping. You want to come along? No, oh, I want to think. You can think while we shop. I know you need celery. What is it? Why can't... Why why can't I just be taken seriously once in a while? I, I just want to write. That's all I want to do, Helen. I want to write. Hey, you really mean it, don't you? Yeah. Because when I, when I die and they put that tombstone up out there, I don't want it to just say, here lies mommy, or here lies hey you, or here lies, here lies uh, somebody's friend, or here lies honey, or here lies Jim's wife. I want that tombstone to say, here lies Dorothy Benson, what a woman. Uh, who am I kidding? I'm never going to be a writer. That's just some kind of a carrot I'm dangling in front of myself just to help me make it through the casseroles. So, you'll never be a writer. I'm old. I'm old, old, old. You know what it's like to get a ticket from a policeman who burps pablum? Dorothy, if you're not griping just for the fun of it, I have the perfect solution for you. Yeah? School. <laughs> school. I'm serious. Night school. Lots of old folks go to night school. Take a course in writing. That'll get you going. The classes are from 7 to 9 on Tuesdays and Fridays, and the teacher's a professional writer, so I can actually get college credit. You really want to do this? Well, of course I want to do it. You want to go back to school now? I think I can dot her in and out. Uh-huh. Who is it? Got some cookies out here for Benson. Oh, yes, that's a, that's a Fireside Girls cookie. Excuse me a minute. I, I made some space in the kitchen there. Oh, sure. Excuse me. You bought all these cookies? No, 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 no. The, the, uh, the Fireside Excuse Girls... Me. Need a local headquarters, and we're it. Uh, Excuse me. They can't keep running clear over to the factory every time they sell a box of cookies. Why do you volunteer for all this? Oh, I, stuff? I didn't volunteer. I, I went out to the bathroom for a minute, and when I came back, I was the cookie chairman. Excuse me. Excuse me. Seems wrong. Well, I, I couldn't very well say no after they applauded me and everything, could I? Debbie, I still have those boxes of cookies that you promised to sell. Yes, I know your grandmother died yesterday. She also died last Tuesday and a week ago Saturday. I'm not buying it, Debbie. I am up to my fireside girl's motto and cookies. I know they're mostly preservative and will therefore outlive us all, but they must have put some food in them somewhere, and that's not going to last forever. Debbie, it's been two whole weeks. We're all getting zits here from the aroma alone. Debbie, if these cookies are not out of my house by this weekend, I am personally going to come over to your house and set fire to your semaphore flags. Yes, you can tell your mother on me. Debbie, De
Well, I've either got to get rid of those cookies or use them for coasters. Why can't you freeze them? Kelly, take Arlo for his walk. I'm bushed. Well, you're either bushed or you're washing your hair. You've got to try for some other moods. Well, as soon as your father walks in that door, I am once again a schoolgirl. What do you think, huh? How do I look? Maybe I should wear argyles and penny loafers? What are they? Nobody's that young. <laughs> Hello? Jim, where are you? Oh, no, not tonight. Tonight's my class. My night school class in writing, you know, and I want you to stay with the kids. No, 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 no. Steve's not here. He's, he's off on a camping trip, junior loggers or something. No, it's too late. I can't get a babysitter now. Yeah, well, I guess it can't be helped. No. No, it's no great tragedy. I guess if I miss the first class, it's just an orientation type thing. But, honey, please remember next Tuesday. I can't miss it again. Okay. Bye-bye. Kelly, take these into the kitchen. I want to talk to your brother. All right, David, I've decided not to tell your father what happened in the car today. Even though I am still shaking from the experience. Now, I know you probably thought it was very funny to see your mother staring down the barrel of a policeman's shotgun. But believe me, it was not. Now, if you ever put a sign in the back window of the car again saying, help, I'm being kidnapped, I will move away from this house and not leave you the address. Can I go now? No. I want to talk to you about something else. David, look at me. I want your full attention. Now come closer. Watch the words. We have a four-legged moose in this house who answers to the name of Arlo occasionally. Now, I'm sure he gets a kick out of relieving himself with some regularity. Let us not wait for his telltale signs of urgency, such as gnawing on the doorknob, tears welling up in his eyes, or the crossing of his legs. David, did you understand what I just said? Um, can I ask you a question? Yes. How many teeth do you have? Hello? Oh, Jim, you're kidding. This is my night class again. My night school class in writing, one of which I have already missed, and there's nobody here to stay with Davy. No. No, I'm not annoyed. Why should I be annoyed just because you never give my schedule a second thought? So when will you be in? The weekend. Swell. I'll take Polaroid pictures of the kids so you can see how they're growing. I need a break. How, how about a cup of coffee? Oh, oh, I'd love to. But I, I can't. Davy tells me you're taking a night school course. In writing. Hey, that's terrific. Well, it would be if I could ever get there. You know, I don't know what it is, but I just can never seem to find the time to do everything. Oh, I know what you mean. I'm taking a real estate course. And, like, study time is such a problem. Real estate? Uh-huh. 
I think I'll give it a whirl in a little while. That'll mean that both of us be working, so it'll take some adjusting, but I... Oh. May I take your order? Yes. Coffee. Two cups of coffee, please. Two coffees? Uh-huh. Thank you. And... Oh. Oh. Remember me? Brother Bud? The pan party. Oak Haven Manners, right? Yes. <sighs> Hello. Hi. Two coffees, right? Coming right up. Fun to be with, you know that? I mean, I'm very comfortable with you. Were you an athlete in college? A lousy one. No coordination. Really? I find that very hard to believe. I mean, after all, you've got such a great build. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, 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 your shoulders, uh, the height. Is your wife tall? Linda? Five feet, ten inches. Five ten? That's tall. You have a tall wife. I, I thought I was tall, but uh, five ten, that's tall. How tall is Jim? Jim. Jim is, uh, Jim's tall. He's tall. He's, um, uh, he's about, uh, how tall are you? Six feet, two inches. Six feet, two. That's tall. Jim's tall. Huh. He's tall. <laughs> Since we're all so tall, maybe the four of us can get together and play some basketball or something. Well, thanks for the coffee, Ralph, but I've really got to be going. Well, he hasn't come with the... I, I really can't miss that class again tonight. Could you just... I'm, I'm a student. Um, I'll be seeing Fireside girl cookie. Again? And take it outside and use it as a frisbee. Mom, I think Arlo's set. Give him two aspirin and call me in the morning, Kelly. I think I'd do better at Joey's. All right, but you'll be home by 5.30, Davey. We're going to eat as soon as your father walks in that door. Mom. If I miss this class tonight, I've blown the whole thing. Mom. His food's still out there from this morning when he looks really sick. Arlo, did you eat one of those cookies? Huh? All right, Kelly, um, you call the vet. Tell him I'm bringing Arlo in. Come on, baby, we'll fix you up. Come on. What did Doctor say? He looks okay to me. Arlo, Arlo, Arlo come on, honey. Arlo. Come on. Arlo. Arlo. Somehow he got a hold of a sponge and it expanded in his stomach. Is he okay? Yeah, he'll be fine. We just can't give him water for a year. Really? Mom, you forgot to catch my sleeping bag, and I've got a camping trip tomorrow night. I didn't forget. I'll do it in the morning. What time is it? 7.30. It doesn't look like dinner's even started yet. I'm starved. Me too. <laughs> you know, I really must teach you guys how to turn the oven on sometime. Jim, you're going to have to take the kids out for a hamburger. I've just got time to make my class. Oh, that thing is that thing. Loony mommy's loony little things. I make fun of you because you like to sleep on the cold ground all zipped up to your nose. Mom, when you come back, will you help me with my Halloween costume? Oh, well, honey, it'll be a little late for that, but don't worry. We still have time to make your pirate suit. I decided to be an iguana instead. Well, that might take a little longer. Mom, 
Can you drive me to Debbie's house? Kelly, I don't have time tonight. Mommy's limousine service is closed. Daddy's gonna have to drive you. Doc, why break your back dashing off to Piedmont High when they've got writing classes right down here on the mall? They're in the afternoon and you wouldn't be turning everybody's life upside down? Jim, that is a poetry class taught by a strange old lady with three names and 17 parakeets. My teacher is a published author. He's already had two plays produced. Okay, okay. It, it just seems to me that if you're really serious about this writing, you, you might try to get organized to the point where you might have dinner ready before you go rushing off. But could I help it if Arlo got sick? Now, is it too much to ask you to take the kids out for a hamburger for one night? No. No, I've only taken on two new accounts today to try to keep our heads above water, so why not take on some of your domestic chores while you go trotting off to school like some teenager? Keep our heads above water. Do you have any idea what it costs to live in this house? Insurance, taxes, car payments. And when are we going to get rid of those 99,000 boxes of moldy cookies you foisted on me? Foist? You use the word foist on me? You the great foister? You foist. A ten-ton truck on me when all I wanted was a spiffy little sports car. You foist a dog on me that was more trouble to potty train than all three kids put together. And you foist fertilizer on me every time my back is turned. Now we've got a vet, Bill. How did he get a sponge? I chopped it up and fed it to him in his kibble. Well, somebody ought to keep an eye on that dog. Well, you keep an eye on him. Or you, or you. Because I've got a hot flash for every one of you. This hired hand is resigning. Now, I am going to that class for two lovely hours. And I'm sure you'll all starve to death before I get back because none of you will be able to figure out how to open up the refrigerator. And if you want to save more money, why don't you try buying a little less manure? sex education book it's clarified a couple of things for me. You saying we have a sex problem? No, I'm not saying that. How was your class? Stimulating, I think. You think? I was so upset I couldn't completely focus on what he was saying. But I do know I want to continue taking it. And do it. Do it like you do everything else you want to do. Like what else I want to do? Like moving us into this house for one big thing. this house as much as I did. You came home one night after being mugged and you said the neighborhood wasn't safe and we'd better get out of there. I was upset and you took advantage of the fact that I was scared by a mugging. We looked for houses for over a month before we settled on this one. You had plenty of time to collect your wit. You don't get over a mugging in a month. Besides, I was tired of being made to feel like a big flop because I couldn't give you everything you wanted. All I ever heard from you is I want my own space. I want a yard. I want an office. I want to write. And ever since we've been here, I haven't even seen you write a shopping list. Well, how would you like to do your work stuck in the back of a garage like a flat tire? How would you like it if I came down to your office every day and dumped a sack of fertilizer on your desk? I probably wouldn't even notice. I'm so punchy. You can't drive back and forth on the thruway for two hours every day and keep your sanity. If you wanted to write, you'd write. Hemingway wrote in men's rooms. Well, fine. Maybe I ought to try that next. Might just be the inspiration I'm looking for. 
Nobody is forcing you to keep these hours. You do. We could get by on less money, and you know it. Get by. Get by. Is that what life is all about, just getting by? Wouldn't you like to have a little money in the bank? It's all gone, you know, for this. Wouldn't you like to be able to take a trip or send your kids to college? Of course I would. We're a little low on cash right now. It'll just take time to build it up again, that's all. I know, I know. I would just like to be able to take a new account if it came along. If only I could have some peace of mind at home. When? You're never here. And when you are, you're, you're out on that lawn. Now a man can't have a hobby. Oh, yeah, you can have a hobby. So why can't I have a hobby? Who's stopping you? Lord, all I'm asking is you postpone a damn class once in a while. All right, all right. Maybe you're not stopping me from writing. I don't know, but you're sure not giving me any encouragement. Well, you marry somebody hoping that they're going to encourage you and stand behind you and not sneer and jeer and ridicule. I never ridiculed your writing. I guess you haven't. I haven't written anything to ridicule. <sighs> What's the matter with us? Fighting over things like lawns and night school class and fertilizer. People don't fight over things like that. Maybe they do. I've heard of people splitting up over toothpaste brands. What are you talking about? You think that's what's happening to us? No, I don't know. No, no, I, I'm just talking about things that irritate people. I don't know what's happening to us. It's so nice when a friend you haven't seen for years says, you still look so young. All of Olé is part of your secret. It disappears into your skin to soothe dryness, to help make your skin softer, smoother, and younger looking. Oil of Olay, so every age can be the best you've ever looked. Feelings, nothing more than feelings. Almost every Tuesday they call me. My mom or one of my brothers and sisters will start off talking and then I'll talk to each one of them and we'll get there. Hi, how you doing, Chris? Oh, I'm pretty good, Peg. What's new with you? Oh, not too much. It can be the same week after week, but it's still just hearing their voice just, you know, kind of cheers you up. Superstyle. I expected more, but not this much more. Our new Superstyle pizzas are a whole lot more. Who like pizza on top of pizza? More of your favorite toppings than ever before. This new pizza has style. Superstyle. All right. Let yourself go to Pizza Hut. Go for new Superstyle. Superstyle. Does your husband care about the wash? No, he doesn't care about it at all. Mrs. Rizzo just uses detergent alone. Let's see what happens when she adds Clorox bleach to one of her loads. Which of these shirts would you rather wear? I'd rather wear these. They look cleaner. And uh, I'm very particular about my clothes. I, I see that he does care about it, even though he's never talked to me about it. He picked the Clorox one. Yes, you really can see the difference. Yes. This is much cleaner looking. Clorox makes the difference. The clean wash is important to Mike. The grass is always greener over the septic tank. We'll continue. Dear Great Pumpkin, I'm looking forward to your arrival on Halloween night. They're back. All the Little Peanuts characters in a happy Halloween special filled with ghosties and ghoulies and things that go bump in the night. It's The Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown, Monday at 8, 7 Central and Mountain. This is CBS. The General Store, where folks could find most everything they needed, and at low prices. That idea is still alive. Come discover Fed Mart, America's greatest general store. 
At FedMart, you save on produce, meat, clothing, appliances, and so much more. You see, FedMart believes if you give folks quality at a low price, you've got a customer for life. Discover FedMart, America's greatest general store. Smog Investigation, tomorrow at 5 and 6. Be the scout meeting this morning? Yes. I just got to finish signing on this badge. You need any help, David? No, I can do it. But I do need to ride to baseball practice. Okay. Where's Steve? He fixed his sleeping bag and went to Kenny's to work on his magic act. Okay. I'll pick you up after the PTA meeting. Okay. Hi, Coach. Do you know anything about anybody in the neighborhood having an affair? Hmm? No. We've just been dishing about it. We cannot figure out who it can be. She's here, she's here. <laughs> well, all I heard was that one of the so-called ladies of our community is uh, carrying on with another man in the afternoon. Oh, that's just somebody's wishful thinking. What'd she do? Spike the kid's peanut butter with sleeping pills the afternoon? <laughs> oh. Sure it isn't you, Helen? What, and give up my nap? <laughs> Marcy? If you find my front door lock and the shades pulled, you will call the police, ladies, because my head will already be in the oven. <laughs> <laughs> it's impossible to have an affair in these suburbs. Your car gets recognized, the bus service is lousy, mm -hmm. there's too much glass, and too many kids running in to use the bathroom. Yeah. Well, then it must be Dorothy. <laughs> Me? <laughs> How could I? My vocabulary has been reduced to four sentences. Close the door, don't talk with your mouth full, wash your hands, and you should have gone before we left the house. Yeah, me too. I wouldn't even know how to talk to a man. You don't have to. Let him do all the talking. <laughs> well, I certainly wouldn't mind having an affair with Ralph Corliss. Oh, Leslie, how can you be so teenage? Hey, hey, I'm just being up front. I tell my husband the same thing. And what would he say? He'd say... Thanks for sharing that. Well, Dorothy, you have got to admit that you uh, have a few little fantasies about Ralph. What are you thinking? I'm thinking that this is probably the most adolescent conversation I've heard in years. We should be sitting here discussing nutrition or carpools. I have to pick up Davy. Well, excuse me. Okay, kids. Same time tomorrow. And don't forget your lunches. I won't. How was I? You're beautiful. Hi. Hi. Why, it looks like the team's improving. They're getting so good, I'll have to disband them. <laughs> Mom, is there any gum in the car? Yeah. I'm going to get it. Especially Davy. He's been hitting a mean ball lately. He is. Well, I'll just have to have a talk with him about that. How's Linda? Oh, pretty good. Busy as usual. And Jim? Oh, he's fine. He's, he's very busy now, too. Could I buy you a hamburger and a Coke? No, I, I don't think so today, Ralph. I've, uh, I got a lot of things to figure out. Hey, can I help you? 
Well, I don't think so. I hope it works out. Thanks. You know, this isn't exactly the type of conversation I thought we'd have the next time we met. I know. But look, uh, there is a lousy bus service and all that glass and kids running in and out of the bathroom. Nuts. When CoverGirl set out to make a perfect mascara, they asked professional models what they wanted most. This is it. New CoverGirl Professional Mascara with a rich fiber-free formula and a special curl brush. A system designed to give you the look CoverGirls demand. Long, defined lashes, evenly colored, perfectly curled. There's never been a mascara like this before. New CoverGirl Professional Mascara. It gives you the look CoverGirls demand. Most shampoo makers act like everyone with dandruff has the same type of hair, but not Selsun Blue. Selsun Blue is the only leading dandruff shampoo with formulas for dry, normal, and oily hair, and the only one with the anti-dandruff ingredient doctors prescribe most. So no matter what kind of hair you have, get the really effective dandruff control you need from Selsun Blue, the dandruff fighter, now in dry, normal, and oily formulas. The Saint is marching in. Dodge reintroduces the full-sized car. Saint Regis. Not downsized or resized, but built from scratch. Saint Regis. It's a new kind of car. The full-sized car of the future. That's my Dodge. Surprise! A baby shower for me? Of course, Nanny. And the first surprise... Johnson's Disposable Diapers for newborns. I'll be using a different newborn. Not Johnson's? New Improved Johnson's Newborn. Even more absorbent. Let's compare it to the leading brand. The same amount of water. Lift them up and look. Johnson soaks it up. The other is dripping. Johnson's New Improved Newborn from Johnson & Johnson keeps babies drier than the leading newborn. Yeah, I, I think I finally figured those through ways out. I get it. I get it. Need to wash your hands. Go back. Let's just pack up, sell the house, and go back. Are you serious? I have never been more serious in my whole life. I don't think I've relaxed for five minutes since we moved out here. You were right. It was my fault. I pushed and I pulled at you in every single direction until you had no choice but to give in. And I wouldn't let myself see what it was doing to you, all this work and the pressure. No wonder you had to bury yourself in that lawn. 
I'm sorry I made fun of it. You worked so hard and you did such a good job. Lester says it's the best looking lawn on the block. It is. And to think that you did all that while you were working and and here I, I picked on you and I criticized you and I yelled at you in front of the kids. And I yelled at you too. Not as loud as I yelled at you. Oh, Let's go back. What about your space? You don't want to give up all your writing. Space? What space? You're right about that, too. If I had any talent at all, if I had anything on the ball, I could have written anywhere. I want to give it up. I'm giving it up. It's given up. You sure about this? You know something? I feel better already. Ah, maybe someday when the, when the kids are grown and we're filthy rich, I'll give it a whirl again. But right now, I have enough to keep me busy. What about the kids of going back the to the kids, city? They adjust so easily, and they'll have all their old friends again. We won't have the same apartment. We'll be able to get that well, kind we'll of look room. Look around. There are other apartments. Oh, honey, I am just so sorry I put you through all this. Yeah. I found a sensational new lawn clipper today. Mm. What? Come here. I want to show this. <laughs> you got to see this. It's so automatic that all you have to do is say cut. It practically does it itself. What? Staper with matching staples, a pen holder with pen. The pad with a funny saying on it. Picture of the kids and me. Of course, if you do want to quit, we, we, we can take it apart, but if you don't want to write, you could always come out here and then and, and just doodle. Or you could tap dance. You could look at the car. Or you could even scream. Well, when did you do all of this? Today. Today, Lester and I hit every shop on the mall. The old kid can still move when he has to. But, but the paneling. Oh, that was a snap. Well, did you go to work? I left as soon as I got there. They don't own me. This is going to need a few more nails. We lost that chocolate cereal account. Oh, honey. Oh, no, no, I hated that damn product anyway. My last suggestion was cereal can give you pimples. <laughs> hey, it's in the care for it. <laughs> honey, I think sometimes I'm the last guy in the world to give something. What? I've really been selfish and stupid no, about this. No. I, I, I know I haven't backed you, and... You're the most important person in the world to me, and I, 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 would, I would really hate to see you quit before you start. You know, I haven't been this happy since the doctor told me the rabbit lived. Yeah? Someone here to see you. Mr. Benson? Yes. Frank Loring, County Building Inspector, Sewage and Drainage. I'm afraid you got the wrong septic tank out there. I didn't know I had a choice. <laughs> Actually, you don't. You see, according to this, you've got a 621B. Now, that's not up to code, and we'll have to change it. Change it? Yes. We'll have a man out here dig up your lawn first thing in the morning, okay? Have a nice day. Excuse me. Wait a minute. Hold, hold on a minute. Wait, wait a minute. They can't dig up our lawn, can they? What's going to happen to my maple 
Oh, I spent an hour this morning. All right, everybody, take it easy. Nobody's going to come in here, make an announcement like that, and walk out of here. I would take this to court if I had to. Nobody's going to come here and dig up this lawn. I could have sworn that septic tank was in the front yard. The CBS Wednesday Night Movies will return next Wednesday with Burt Reynolds, Lauren Hutton, and Gator on most of these stations. Trouble, J.D. The CBS Saturday Night Movie Special at 8.30, 7.30 Central and Mountain. We'll take them from here on, J.D. I'm willing to die trying to keep them. The question is, are you willing to die trying to take them? John Wayne stars with George Kennedy in Cahill, U.S. Marshal. Ha! Hold it! Saturday on CBS. On the news tonight, local politicians rally for tax cuts and the hunt for an arsonist in one of the huge L.A. brush fires. Details next. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to get rid of these hard water deposits no matter what it takes. Wait. Try Lime Away. Another cleanser? I've tried all kinds. Powders, aerosols, even industrial strength liquids. But Lime Away was developed specifically to cut through and remove the lime, rust, and scale deposits left by hard water. Hey, it wipes right off. And I didn't even have to scrub. Hard water problems? Don't scrub all day. Use Lime Away. The training and professionalism of Los Angeles firefighters has always been a great source of pride for our city. Along with police protection, our high level of fire protection is being jeopardized by Proposition O, which threatens to throw salary negotiations into the political arena. We haven't had fire or police strikes in Los Angeles. Our citizens are proud of the best service in the world. Don't remove the prevailing wage clause. I urge you, vote no on Proposition O. The Andersons and the Joneses bought new furniture today in the Los Angeles area. The Joneses will probably get their new furniture sometime in the next six to eight weeks. And the Andersons? They bought theirs at Wix Furniture and brought it on home with them. Because at Wix, we keep the biggest selection in stock. Want to keep up with the Andersons? Don't wait. Come to Wix Furniture. We've got in stock what you've got in mind. You've got it all together when you walk on into Wix. Welcome to Wix. Smog investigation tomorrow at 5 and 6. This is the Channel 2 News. Good evening, I'm Joseph Benty, along with Connie Chung, and this is the night's news. In Reseda tonight, politicians, some of them from the local area, vowed to keep tax-cutting spirit of Proposition 13 alive. Channel 2's Ken Gale was there and has a report. You didn't see any major candidates or front-runners or big-money lobbyists for special interests here. It was a chance for the lesser knowns and for those backing unfamiliar ballot propositions to catch some attention. There were some familiar faces, Bobby Fiedler of anti-busing fame, for example, using this platform to tie that cause to the Proposition 13 tax revolt. I think we've done a dynamite job, and I said we, we passed Proposition 13. I think it really is with no Organizers presented recommendations for a whole shopping list of ballot propositions which they say will keep the spirit of 13 alive. About 250 people came to the tax rally, and one of the elder statesmen of tax cutting and tight budgets, City Councilman Ernani Bernardi, said he thinks they can have an impact. The group must stay together because there are 
There are many politicians sitting back waiting for the, the, um, the, the government to actually collapse and to blame Proposition 13, and that need not be the case at all. And so it's why it's important for the people who work so hard to get Proposition 13 on the ballot and passed need to stay on their toes and stay on the ball, stay organized. The real star of the show was not here. He is, of course, Howard Jarvis, author of Proposition 13. But he did send a letter, and in it he captured the mood of the rally here. He said, quote, Proposition 13 was just the first step. Now we have to get the meatheads and the bureaucracy. Kenneth Gale, Channel 2 News in Reseda. Today, the Los Angeles City Council put some new teeth in the rent freeze ordinance. If landlords raise rent and evict tenants in violation of the ordinance, they could go to jail and be fined $500 or both. The City Council passed the amendment unanimously. It now goes to Mayor Bradley for his signature, and if signed, it would go into effect in a month. Today, Mayor Bradley was in Sacramento, and he came, came out in support of Chief, Chief Justice Rose Byrd. He said there is no evidence that she is soft on crime and criticized attempts to politicize judicial races. People are taking half-truths, uh, taking uh, decisions and interpreting them as they choose in order to make a campaign issue. Sure, prosecutors are always looking for uh, a conviction rate. They're looking for upholding their contention that a particular defendant is guilty. But the Supreme Court justices have to look at whether or not the Constitution has been violated in that process. And that's exactly what these justices have done. Bradley said that judges cannot make decisions just to win a popularity contest. Fire investigators tonight have isolated what they believe were the causes of four major fires that hit Southern California Monday, destroying tens of thousands of acres and causing millions of dollars damage. Jim Mitchell has the story. The four fires, which burned through nearly 50,000 acres of brush and destroyed nearly 200 homes, all had different causes. The Carbon Canyon fire, which began in the Chino Hills Monday, may have been started by a target shooter. A man was seen driving into the area, a shot was heard, and the man drove away a few minutes before the first smoke was spotted. Investigators are still trying to identify the man seen in the area. The Mandeville Canyon fire, which destroyed about 25 homes, began along Mulholland Drive. Children in an elementary school said they saw a shower of sparks from some nearby power lines. This is the area that uh, the fire originated, and uh, this is where the electrical problem uh, was... Uh, uh, commented on by the different witnesses, so of course this is the area that we're looking at for uh, witnesses on the fire. Arson investigators are still probing the cause of the Sierra Madre fire. Some children were seen in the area shortly before it started, but at this point no one knows if the kids had anything to do with it. The worst of the fires, the 25,000 acre Agora blaze, was set on purpose. Detectives say the arsonist probably drove along this roadway and flipped a matchbook containing a lit cigarette out the window. A few minutes later, the matches burst into flame and the roadside brush caught fire. Investigators have talked to some high schoolers seen in the area, but still have no suspects. Well, if we're speaking of the pyromaniac, uh, his ego, uh, perhaps sexual gratification, the excitement of the incident itself, uh, it's a very sick person we're dealing with. Detectives say the kind of arsonist who set this fire is usually very difficult to catch. That's because he's not motivated by the usual things, greed, revenge, but instead he's driven by some sort of inner compulsion. And he's the kind of arsonist 